What is up, y'all? Listen, if you guys are here, I know exactly how you may be feeling. You're probably feeling frustrated, overwhelmed, and even questioning if you'll ever get good at drilling in dental school. You know that constant stress of just not getting it right while you feel like everybody else is moving up ahead. I get it, those moments can make you feel like absolute shit at times. And I'm here to tell you that it's okay. It's all part of the process. But today I'm gonna to be sharing with you five tips that completely changed the game for me in dental school. And these are the things that I wish someone had told me when I was going through the struggles, the ups and downs. And if you stick with me till the end of this video, I got a secret bonus tip that could be the difference between that B plus and that A on that next practical. All right, tip number one is that we have to focus on parallelism. This is one of the first things that you have to master in dentistry. You want to keep your burr parallel to the long axis of the tooth. I know it sounds easy, but at the start, it's pretty tricky and it's really important. You see, the key here is the muscle memory you'll develop over time. It's just like riding a bike and it improves with practice. But trust me, once you get this down, your preps will look way cleaner, way smoother, and you'll even reduce the risk of making them uneven or too deep in certain areas. You see, when I'm drilling, I'm constantly reorienting myself with the drill and the tooth and also the adjacent teeth nearby. One thing I noticed is that your hand naturally tilts in towards the mouth. So it's very important to keep that in mind when you're focusing on your parallelism. A good thing to keep in mind is that you always want your wrist fixed in the same plane. You wanna be doing all the movements from your elbow or shoulder. You see, this technique becomes really important during crown preps, where you're mastering this hand pattern and it gives you that nice taper all around your tooth. If you're keeping your wrist fixed, it's very easy to make smooth movements throughout your preparation. If your wrist is not fixed, you can make a lot of different errors in your preparation design. All right, tip number two is to not pick up the drill as often as you'd like to. I know, as crazy as it sounds, it's really inefficient to constantly just keep punching the tooth with the drill like you're Mike Tyson chasing Jake Paul. Every time you lift it, you create more rough surfaces and uneven cuts in your preparation design. Instead, try keeping your hand movement steady and smooth. Think of it like you're painting a paintbrush. You would never just start making strokes and then picking it up and then putting it back down and keep painting. You wanna let your bird do the work without unnecessary stops and starts. If you can eventually learn how to prep the entire restoration without taking the burr off the tooth, you'll save so much time and your results will improve so fast. And I get it, like, you may be feeling like you're driving a car at 200 miles per hour and you're about to lose control, but with practice, you'll be able to tame that beast that is your handpiece. All right, tip number three is your finger rest is one of the most important things you need in this career. And I'm talking your ring finger. You always wanna have a solid finger rest whether it's on the adjacent tooth or even on the gums nearby. You see, a stable finger rest means you have more controlled, precise movements and you have less drifting away from the prep. Without it, your hand is gonna feel like it's just floating in the air and you won't have any depth control when touching the tooth. For me, my finger rest usually rests on the adjacent tooth behind the tooth I'm preparing or in the gums in the vestibule. I try to keep a nice finger rest taut that way I can move nice and slowly during that preparation design. All right, tip number four is that pedal on the bottom of your foot. You see, when most people start dental school or start drilling, it's like you're driving like a luxury car. You just like slam that pedal, <laughs> go to the floor, you're going as fast as possible. But controlling the rheostat, giving nice steady pressure to it is really important because when you go full throttle, it's very easy to overdo it. You can over drill, you can burn your preparations, you can make them too wide, the proximal boxes start to get big and like oval shaped. But by gently pressing on the pedal, it's like you're revving an engine, right? To keep the speed steady and manageable. Once you find your rhythm with the rheostat and the handpiece at the same time, you're able to get better control and your speed does go up along with your confidence. All right, and the fifth tip is that you really have to get to know your instruments and be using the right tools when you need them. At NYU, the burr choices were really between the 1556 and the 330 burr. The 1556 was great. It was great for smooth, tapered walls, but the depth control was very, very tricky with that burr. The 330 burr, on the other hand, is much shorter, so it was easier to manage the depth. As for depth control, a lot of students like to use depth cuts early on. It's great, I get it. You take the burr all the way to length, you get to move it around different parts of the preparation, you know that's what you're gonna hit and not to go over or under too much. 
Once you start to get a feel for what one millimeter looks like and two millimeters look like depth wise, I wouldn't rely on them forever. For me personally, I like a fluid back and forth motion to gradually achieve the right depth. And you can even use a perio probe to check your depth frequently, especially when you're getting started. So the 1556 depth control was tough because it's about 3.8 millimeters in length. So for that reason, you would have to go halfway in the burr to establish your two millimeter depth which is hard to see all the time when there's water and it's, you're constantly trying to readjust your preparations. The 330 burr, with it being 1.8 to 2 millimeters in length, you were able to sink that burr in without going too deep. So I understand why a lot of kids would use the 330 burr instead. And in dental school, I was constantly going back and forth because I would just never get it right. So both work in different situations, but you have to figure out what works best for you in your hands. And of course, there's some hand tools that help me so, so much in dental school. So I have to say, guys, please show some love to those hoes. I know, I know, they don't wanna be saved, don't save them. No, 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 I became best friend with the hoes and the hatchets. They're great for making those small adjustments when your handpiece skills aren't there yet. Like these tools are especially useful on the plastic type of teeth you'll be working on. But really be careful here because as you push and pull in the same plane, there's a higher propensity to break parts of the tooth off, which is an automatic fail in school. Once you learn to use the cutting edges and go parallel to the floor of the preparation, it'll create much smoother and more even designs in your preparations. We don't really use too much of this in private practice, but in school, it can really make the difference between a B plus and an A minus. I mean, all you really gotta do is make it smooth, get close to the measurements, and just make it shiny so they don't look too hard at your preps, right? <laughs> all right, before I go ahead and give you that bonus tip, I've got some really, really exciting news that I think can help you a ton. Guys, listen, I know dental school can be really frustrating. If you're trying to improve your hand skills, you ask for feedback, but sometimes your professors don't really give you the responses that you want. You try to ask your classmates, your peers, and you never really have a great answer on how to improve each time. I've been there. And that's why I'm happy to announce that I'm building a community on school.com where dental students get instant feedback and coaching on their preparations. Like it's real time from peers who actually care and know what you're going through. You will have access to hours of drilling coaching with tips that'll help you crush your lab practicals and be the best dentist you can be. I'll even create a platform where you can upload pictures of your preps. This way you get quick, valuable advice from people who actually are passionate about dentistry, unlike your little bit older dental school professors. And in this community, you'll build strong fundamentals early on, so you're ready for clinic much sooner. Having this immediate feedback will allow you to be at the top of your class if you ever decide to specialize. And you'll have a supportive network of people focused on helping you be the best. This is the help that dental school didn't give me, so now this is my chance to develop a real curriculum, to develop real confidence in students and your skills specifically to set you up for your future successes. And if that sounds like something you're interested in, just stay tuned, more information is coming soon. All right, and here's that bonus tip for staying with me to the end of the video. A common mistake I see with new grads while I'm watching them drill is that you're holding the drill way, way too tightly. Guys, you don't wanna be holding this thing like you're choking a chicken. <laughs> if you do that, you'll lose that smooth, controlled motion. Think about an artist when they're painting a painting. It's smooth, delicate motions, very loose with everything. This is how you wanna be treating your hand piece. If you ever feel like your hand is tensing up, just take a little break. Understand that you don't wanna be grabbing it so tightly to the point where it's constricting your movement. I know when you're starting, you're holding onto that thing for dear life. But if you're able to learn to loosen up over time, you'll develop less pain, your ergonomics will be better, and your preparations will just be cleaner and smoother in the long run. All right, so I hope these tips help guide you on your way to becoming the best dentist you can be. Don't hesitate to drop some comments down below. Reach out, let me know how you're doing. I'm always here to guide you every step of the way. And I'll see you all in the next video. Remember, you've got this.